today's photo moment, we're going to look at part two of the high speed or FP photography on the Lumix camera. In case you missed it, last week, a week ago today, and we will of course link to it right here, we did part one of this video, part one of this video about high-speed sync photography or high-speed flash photography or FP photography in the parlance of Panasonic and Olympus, apparently. Now I learned finally what FP stands for. FP is focal plane. Now how focal plane flash has anything to do with high-speed sync is completely and utterly beyond me, but that is officially what it's called. Therefore, we will continue to call it fancy pants mode because frankly, it sounds better. So, uh, welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first thrice weekly live show here on the YouTube's photojoseph.com slash YouTube. Other way around, youtube.com slash photojoseph. I know where my show is. And what are you looking at me for? Ryan's just being distracting this morning. Folks, the <laughs> Should we start this show over? So um, we are doing part two about this whole high-speed sync photography thing. So last time we did this, we, we talked about how it actually works and what's happening, which is really kind of cool. I used a cardboard box. It was props and everything. It was like awesome. And we were using one flash, just one on-camera flash to show it. But that one on-camera flash is not often powerful enough to do certain things. And so what we want to do today is show how you can use multiple flashes. We are going to be using three of these big bad boys plus another small one to trigger. Now, you don't necessarily need three. That's just what we set up for today just to kind of show that it can be done. And if you are not using Lumix cameras, this exact same lesson applies to your camera because this tech is not only on Panasonic cameras, it is also on Olympus and Nikon and Canon and Sony undoubtedly. I've never tried it, but I'm sure it is. It's pretty much everywhere. This is not an uncommon thing. So if you're interested in the idea of taking your sunny background and making it dark while illuminating your subject in the foreground with strobe, that's what this is all about. And last week when we did this, we were using, as I said, one flash. And that kind of limits what we can do because if the background, it basically if you don't get enough light out of one flash to overpower the sun, in the case of what we're doing today, then it may not work. So you might need more than one. But you do enter into certain specific challenges, and that's what we're going to be talking about largely today. Uh, very quickly, for those of you who are watching live, of course, if you want to chat or comment or ask any questions, you can do that. Just throw it up in the chat there. If you've got a specific comment, just like Daddy MCC has done right here, type at Photo Joseph in front of it. That shows up nice and bright and red on my screen, and I can see it. And try to keep the questions relevant to today's show, and we will address other questions and other comments on an AMA, which is going to be next week since this Monday we did something else entirely. But just for now, Daddy MCC is saying, with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up, do you think the GH5 might go on sale. Ooh, I doubt it, but often those kind of sales, unless the manufacturer has specifically prohibited them, and this is not Panasonic, this is just global sales stuff, unless the manufacturer has prohibited a price uh, drop, which happens, and I have no idea if the GH5 is under any kind of prohibition, um, it's up to the retailer, the reseller, reseller, retailer, whatever. It's up to them. So, it might, but I would not expect a big discount if there is anything at all, simply because the camera is still selling very well. It's super popular. So, you know, I wouldn't expect much, but you never know. You know, if you can afford to wait, then wait. If you can't and you need it for a job, then we'll just buy it now because you're going to make that money back on the job. All right, so let's talk about this. When we were doing one single light, we just put this light on the camera, tur turned on high speed mode, FP mode, and off we went. When you go to do any kind of remote flash photography, normally, and forget about high-speed mode for a second, normally you have the option to make the flash that is on the camera be a part of the lighting system or not. What that means is, let's just say, that, let's just do a two-light scenario, right? I've got this one on the camera. We're going to pretend this is a camera here. The camera's out there. Pretend that's the camera. This is on camera. This is my off-camera light. Okay. When I fire the camera and it triggers this light, is this light part of the picture? Right, so are both of these illuminating my subject? Am I illuminating from the front and from the side? Or am I only using this light illuminating from the side? This is a choice that you have. You can turn, it's usually called master or something like that. Anyway, you can turn this one on or off. The flash will still fire, and that can be a confusing thing if you've never done this before. Even when you turn off this light, it still fires. It's firing to communicate with this light. However, that flash fire, that flash pulse, is microseconds before the actual photo is taken, so it is not part of the picture. You, to the naked eye, you probably cannot tell the difference. If you turn it on or off, you're, not, you're still going to see the light flash. It might be brighter if it's flashing, but 
The difference, of course, would be in the picture. You would have no light coming from the front and only light from the side or light coming from both directions. Now, I bring all this up because when you go into high-speed sync photography or FP mode on the Panasonic, and I have no idea if this is the case in other manufacturers, but when you go into FP mode, the flash that is on the camera cannot be part of the solution. It is not part of the lighting setup. Only the off-camera lights can be. There's, you'd go into the option to turn that on or off, and it's just grayed out. It says off, and it's off, and that's it. So for whatever reason, and I don't really know the technical reasons behind why, but for whatever reason, when this is the commander for an off-camera high-speed sync flash, it cannot be part of the lighting solution. So with that in mind, just got to know that. And it probably is a means if you're going to set up a, a, a bio systems kind of specifically to do this, you may as well get the smaller one, the 360. So this is the uh, FL 360. This is the little one. This is the 580, the bigger one. You can see the size difference quite clearly there. And I know that Canon has the same kind of thing. They got a little or a bigger one. I'm sure Nikon, I'm sure everybody does. It's You may as well get the little one because you, that's, you know, all you're doing, all you're doing with it is commanding the lights. Okay. So now let's talk about how to set these guys up. This light if I was in, now let's see here, I've got, let me turn this on and make sure it's in place. And we're going to look at the back of this camera. Here's my close up. Let's turn the little light on in here. Right now, as I go into the modes and I start cycling through them, you'll see that the FP mode does not come up because this camera, uh, this light actually has to be on the flash. Let's try that again. This flash has to be on the camera for that FP mode to be available. Okay, so that's not there. So we'll put it on there and that'll come up. The other flash, however, this is a bit more important, is the other flash, let's turn this one on, and switch to the close-up here. So this light here, we're going to turn the backlight on, this one we need in RC mode. So you see that up at the top there, let's get that into place a little, let's go a little bit closer, there we go. You can see there in the top left corner it says RC, if I go into modes I can cycle through, and that RC mode was not will not be available when it's on the camera. It's not going to show up, but when it's off camera, it does. So you get different modes available whether the flash is actually on the camera or not. So this one, again, is going to be an off camera flash. I set it to RC mode. The other things that I can do on here, if we take a look back in the menu, you'll see that we have a channel and this little light there that says A next to it. That's the A bank. You have A, B, and C series or banks that you can program independently. And then what channel you're firing it on, channel one, two, three, or four. I have all three of these lights set to A1 because I'm not interested in adjusting these lights individually because these lights are set up like so. There's the current lighting setup. You can see three, well, two lights right now. There's going to be a third one, the one that's in my hand that's going to be dropped into there shortly. And that lighting setup is what is going to be triggered by this guy here. Those are the lights already on. They're already set into A mode, uh, to RC mode, remote control. And now I'm going to set, well, this one's already set to it now. And so now it's time to go out there and plug this thing in. Um, real quick, just also while I'm here, because it makes it easier to see, if we look at this again, you'll notice, um, hey, Sean, get out of the way. Please tell him to get out of the way, please. <laughs> You're in the shot, buddy. The, uh, you can see that the lights are actually backwards right now. So they're facing into the silver part of the umbrella, the dome of the umbrella, but the sensors are facing forward. So what's happened here is normally this is your normal light position, right? Sensor light going the same direction. If you've ever, ever wondered why your light can do this, it's not so that you can blast yourself in the face while you're shooting. It's so that you can set this up so that this fires one way, but your remote commands are coming from another. And so you can tilt these in whichever direction you need for that. In fact, I'm going to do the same thing with this light on the camera. I'm going to be shooting this direction, but my light's going to be over here. So I'm going to turn this like so, so it can communicate clearly with the lights that I'm pointing at. Excellent. So this is going to be on backwards, pointing in, and you'll see once we get out there that we're going to put a diffusion panel over it. And even with the diffusion panel on, the communication is still going to work. So with that said, let's go outside, shall we? Let's see, I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and all I need is this lamp. And let's go to this camera, and go ahead, Ryan, you're on. So heading outside, heading outside, heading outside. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Okay, so go wide, go wide. Get, get the shot set up. You're, you're in command there, my friend. And you can take your position back over there somewhere. We're going to move this around a little bit. So let's see here. If you need to, are you wide enough or do you want to move back? You can move back if you need to. Go ahead and move back a little bit. I suppose I could move forward, but. All right, we are going to, this is the little light again. We're going to put this one on the GH5. Poor Sean, freezing freezing himself to death over there. And this guy, this guy. No jacket on this guy. That's crazy. No jacket. 
He's from like Minnesota or somewhere cold. Oh, this is like Connecticut, same difference. Oh, I just pissed off somebody there, I'm yeah, sure. Just pissed off Sully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this light's gonna go into here. Here, let me just turn this so you can see what's happening. Um, this thing, by the way, this umbrella, I should tell you what this is. This is uh, the Apollo Orb from Westcott. Is this lighting your way? Uh, this camera in your way? Yeah. Um, this is the Apollo Orb from Westcott. What's really cool about this light is it is designed, even with a single light or multiple lights, it's designed so that the light flashes into this orb shape and bounces back around. Usually a diffuser panel, a softbox, would just shoot straight through the diffusion panel. This goes into here and then wraps around. It just gives a more even light. It's a little bit more wrap around, I think. It's just a slightly different light quality. You know, there's so many different light modifiers out there. Uh, I picked this one up specifically because I was doing something with LED lights that I needed to have a lot of lights in there and a single LED couldn't do it. And so this allowed me the space to do what I needed with three LED lights. And this little guy right here, also from Westcott, is called the Triple Threat. Great name. The Triple Threat allows you to put three lights. You see it's got three cold shoes on it. Three lights on here. So we'll just put that guy into place there. Get that in, there we go. All three of these lights are on and snug in place, and now all three of these lights are shining back through there. So I can also kind of zip off the bottom here, make sure there's no light leakage coming through. And, oh, I got it, thanks. And uh, now I'm gonna drop the panel up. So even with this panel up, we're still going to get the communication coming through to this guy. So let's get this thing in place. Okay, uh, here you can help me with that, since I clearly have no idea which end is up anymore. Uh, there we go, do that, let's fix that. It may not be precise, but it'll work. There we go. And that could be cleaner, but. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that was the, on the wrong one. All right, so that's in place. Okay, so now let's, this is gonna be turned like so. Hopefully the wind won't blow it away. Good enough to start. Okay, so now let's get the camera set up. And I am going to, let's see here. I'm gonna shoot this a little bit high up. I'm gonna kind of point up a bit. Probably should have dropped this down. Let me get this tripod a little bit lower. I'm gonna point up a bit because I want the sun really back behind Sean. I want that bright blue sky behind him there. Now, one of the, one of the things I wish I could do here, and I'm gonna show you a result of this, but I wish that I had full daylight on Sean right now. Our cables aren't long enough. Well, we don't wanna stand in the middle of the road for one, but our cables aren't long enough to go up the backside of the building, which is where I have full sun. So before we did this, I shot a couple of pictures out there just to show you that this even works when you're in full on bright sun shining on Sean's face with the sun behind him. I'll show you that picture when we're done because it works. But for now, we're just gonna have him in the shade, but we're gonna use the full blue sky. Of course, there's a truck pulling in right now. How, 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 yeah, I just cut that tree down, we'll be set. Um, no, anyway, so onward. So I'm just going to tilt this up a little bit here and it's not the most it's not the most attractive shot in the world but that's okay any that's bats in the cave? any bats in the cave no bats in the cave all right let's switch over to let me get this thing up here so i can see what i'm doing and all right so you should be seeing through the gh5 right now so it's very dark you can see actually i'm going to turn the flash off and i'm in manual exposure mode now of course if i wanted to get a proper exposure of sean i would let's see turn on constant preview I could go manual like so, get a picture of him, and there's a picture of Sean, but that's boring, right? So we want the, not because of you, buddy, sorry. <laughs> it's not, no, Thanks sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want him to be lit up, but I want the sky to be really dark, like, let's say like that. So if I take this picture now, again, no strobe firing, we see the sky is nice and dark, but of course, the foreground, him, is completely black. So that's where the light's gonna come into play. Now, could I do this with just one light? Possibly, probably, but we're using three today. And again, I'm gonna show you with full daylight where you definitely couldn't do it with just the one light in just a moment. So let me turn this thing back on. Uh, let's see here, I'm going to move this light back a little bit here. I'm gonna point this strobe, am I on the right camera here? I'm gonna point this little head into this guy. So that's gonna fire that, it'll trigger that whole thing with any luck. And this is on, it's in RC mode. Now here's the trick on the camera. Let's go back to looking at the camera itself. I'm gonna go into the menu system and go to the flash setup and go down to 
wireless. Now wireless is currently on, so you can see that. That's obviously necessary for this to happen, so we gotta turn that on. Wireless channel is on channel one, as I set the flashes to. Wireless FP, this is the critical point. This is the high speed control. I need that to be on. If that's not on, we're not gonna get high speed mode. Communication light is on high. That's just how bright the light is gonna to shine to communicate with the other one and then with the other lights. And then we get into the wireless setup. So here you've got wireless setup A, B, and C groups. Remember I talked about that before. Um, we are only using the A group right now because they're all in one place. There's no point in setting them separately. But if I had one light here, one light there, a backlight, somewhere, you know, all different places, I could set them up as that's the A, that's the B, that's the C. And then I can go into here and individually adjust those, which is really, really cool. Because from your camera, you can, and we'll do a whole show on this another day. But from your camera, you can say, okay, the main light, I want that to be down a third of a stop. The key light, I want to bring that up a full stop. And you can make all those changes from the back of the camera. Another show for another day. But for now, as you can see here, we've got A group is set to FP, that's our high speed, focal plane or fancy pants mode, TTL. I can also go manual here, but I don't wanna go manual. I'm gonna go FP, TTL, and flash adjust plus or minus. So if I wanna make the flash brighter or darker, this is where I get to it. And just to kinda of show how I've set this up here, um, remember that you can program any of these buttons to do anything on your camera, right? Pretty much. You don't wanna to have to go digging into the menu system to do a uh, exposure compensation for your lights. So what I've done is I have just reprogrammed the right side of the dial to bring up the command. So when I push that right side of the dial, I don't know if you can see that on that camera, it brings up these commands here. So if we switch back to the camera view here real quick, you'll see here as I do that, I push the right side of it, it brings up those controls. Okay, so that's now set up. So now let's just take a picture. Make sure we're actually focused on Sean and boom, that's it. Look at how easy that was, You're looking great. Right. Beautiful. It's like nothing to change. It's like a perfect shot. We're good. Let's uh, let's do another one. Let me um, let me bring the light a little bit closer to you. Okay. I'm not quite sure. Uh, take a half a step to that direction for me. There we go. I'm not quite sure if the light will still trigger. We're going to find out. Do that. Focus again on him. And boom. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? So now let's just say that I want the... I want the light on him to be a little bit darker. It's, it's, I mean, honestly, it's pretty perfectly exposed. Let's say I wanna bring it down a little bit. Maybe it's just, it's a little bit hot. You know, it's a little hot. Let's bring it down a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna hit the right side of this to go into that control mode there and go to A group, take the flash adjust, and let's just take it down like two thirds of a stop. Okay, and let's fire it again. Maybe a little bit darker. Let's try it again. Let's go down, let's go down like, let's go down two stops, make it really dramatic. Fire that again. And you can see that getting progressively darker and darker in there. So now I wanna show you the last shot that I, the shot that I did out in the full daylight, which I'm now realizing, I'm not sure, cause I don't see when I'm playing here. Well, we're gonna try something here. Let's see, let's make sure that we're on the right camera. I am going to hopefully get this up. Let me pull, went to my computer, went to, there we go, right one. Oh, we're on this camera, right. Uh, let's get this full on. Okay, here's the shot that I wanna show you. Hopefully this works. Fingers crossed, if I plug that in, it says TV output in progress. Hopefully when I do this, you are seeing that awesome picture. With any luck, you are seeing a picture with a sun, the sun full on behind Sean, and I'm getting looks of confusion from everybody else in the Start studio. Um, it just started buffering, good timing. Hopefully you saw the picture of Sean there. And that is all there is to that. I'm gonna head back inside. I will double check that you can see that from there, and if not, we'll, I'll post it online or something. But let's go back in. All right, and that is all there is to that. Let me see, are you seeing that picture? You're not seeing that picture, okay. Hey, you know what? Um, tell Sean to bring me the GH5, please. I will, uh, we'll figure out a way to pull this picture off because I want you to see this. It looks so cool when you've got the sun full on behind him, like literally blasting over his shoulder and the light from this big old strobe that we just set up. So we're gonna get that in here. In the meantime, let's see what's going on in the comments. All right, uh, where were we, where were we? Uh, ben 5 Shuttle says, referencing FP, aren't focal plane shutters the only ones which have an issue with high speed, thank you, with high speed shutter speeds and flash? Yes, that is correct. If you have a, if you have the, um, what's it called, not focal plane, the, uh, I forget what it's, what it's called now. Anyway, if you have the type of shutter that's in the lens, then yeah, you don't have this issue. And I, you know, I honestly don't know why. I've got something pulled up bookmarked so I can read about that. I've never really understood those type of shutters, the in-lens shutters. I gotta learn that one of these days. But the shutter itself, this type of shutter that sits over the focal plane is a focal plane shutter. So the fact that we're in focal plane mode doesn't really make sense because you're always in focal plane mode because it is a focal plane shutter. Uh, that's so, I don't know why it's called it anyway, doesn't matter. 
Um, Serge says, two days ago, I got my new Godox TT6800 for 100 bucks. Works just fine with the GH5, TTL, HSS, and Multiflash. What? That's 100 bucks? Wow. That's a heck of a deal. Probably TT680. I think there's an extra O in there. TT680 is for $100. Well, that is for, here, you know what? That's, that's worth pulling up on here. Um, status. Oh, look at that. We dropped. We lost quality. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, this cam computer decided to start doing a backup. So let's see. Hopefully that'll lighten up. Um, while we're waiting for that, we are going to uh, b &H. I know what I'm doing. BH Photo. And, and we're back to good. Excellent. Looked like we lost a little streaming quality there for a moment, but we're back. And it was the Godox TT680. And Think Light, wow, look at these things. Think Light Flash, Wireless Sync. Here's for, oh, for Nikon. Okay, that's probably a generic one. Um, Canon, hmm, let's do this. Let's just do Godox TT. Oh, 6,800, sorry. Six, or 680, I wrote uh, 600. Oh, no, that's why I just re reverted back to 600. Uh, please confirm for me, sir, what model you have there. I wonder if I'm getting the wrong model number typed in here. Let me just try this. Godox Panasonic. And let's see what we find there. Um, there's kits. 350, 6850. Okay, maybe the 6800 is something. It was another uh, country. So there you go. That's the one he must be talking about. The TT6850 Think Light TTL Flash for Olympus Panasonic cameras, only $110. That is pretty slick. Wow. Deal. Absolute deal and a bargain. So check those guys out for sure. Okay. Mm, let's see here. Where else are we? Dan DG asks, what flashes are we using? So we were using today the Panasonic Lumix flashes. I have three of the 580s, which are the bigger one, and then one 360, which is the smaller one, and that's what I'm using to trigger the other strobes. And let's see here. Sean says, can I use one of these as my new profile pick? Yes, you can. What's it going to cost you? For you, buddy, I make a good price. All right, let's, uh, did I pull the card out? I did. Let me pull this picture into here because I want you to see this picture that we did because this is, this is really cool. Let me uh, get this card up here, and then I will show it to you. Any other questions, drop them in there because we're going to wrap this show up as soon as I get this picture up here to show you. Where was that cool one? Here, I think this was it. Let's see if this is the one. Open this guy up. Oh, it's opening Photoshop. <sighs> no, I don't want to rate Photoshop today. I would like to just open the picture, please. There we go. Um, let's... Adobe Camera Raw. Yes, open the image, please. And let's just switch over to the Mac. There you go. Look at that. Whoa, that's too close. Too close. There we go. Check that out. Full sun in the background blasting through. And you, it's great. We've got the highlight from the sun illuminating the back of his head. This light here, this is entirely from those three strobes. A little bit of wraparound, probably a little bit of reflective light. Um, I could have gone even darker on the background, just taken a higher shutter speed and made that darker. But that is pretty darn cool. I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I think that is just awesome. So there we go. That's what we've got. Any other, any other activity going on here in the comments? No, nothing, nothing here. All right, guys, well, let's go wrap it up. Um, what else do I want to tell you about today before we go anywhere? Let's just remind you, as always, you saw me using the GH5. If you have a GH5, you want to know more about the GH5, do check out gh5training.com, where I have all kinds of lovely, lovely information about the GH5. It is a five and a half hour long training course. And I guarantee you, you're going to learn yourself something. Diane's got a question in here that I'm going to hit real quick, and then we're going to call it. I'm the lady, hello, Diane, who's been having issues with my 360L. That's this guy, right? 360L, yes. I can't access the wireless setup when it's in the shoe. You can't access the wireless setup when it's in the shoe. Mm -hmm. You turn wireless on, and we can't turn wireless on? I don't know. Because, yeah, all I'm going to do is go into flash. Flash mode, go to wireless, turn wireless on. So if the wireless there is not turning on, let's see here. If I turn that off, let me see if I can get it to a way where I can't do that. I'm going to turn the wireless off and put this into a different mode. Let's go into like, I don't know, I'll put it in FP mode as an example. Go back in here, flash control. I know you're not seeing this camera. I can turn it on. As soon as I turn wireless flash on on the GH5, it overrides whatever I've set in the camera, and basically the camera takes over. So 
Sorry, Diane. Um, I, I recall the conversation. Ping me again. We'll see if we can get you sorted out. Um, and that's going to be that. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in today. That was a lot of fun. You know the routine. If you like the show, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that little bell. And, uh, and I was supposed to say that in the beginning, wasn't I? Ryan forgot to remind me. Let's start saying that in the beginning of the show. Eh, what are you going to do? Take care of yourselves, everybody. Hope you have a great Wednesday, and we'll see you back here on Friday. And oh, oh, sorry. Wait, don't. Wait. Almost forgot. Um, I'm doing a show, it was supposed to be at noon today. I moved it to tomorrow because life. Um, it is the, let me pull this graphic up, the Polar App Workflow video. So this was scheduled for noon today. It is now going to be noon tomorrow. So if you're planning on tuning in live for that, my apologies, but I'll be back tomorrow, 24 hours later. So do tune in for that tomorrow. Also tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. when this show normally go live, we will be going, we will be taking the video live about this thing, the Edelkron Org. Elkhorn Slider 1, setting it up for time-lapse, which is, it's a really cool little video. I'm quite proud of it. It's, you know, I'm playing with this whole editing, concise things. Anyway, take care of yourselves, everybody. See you next time. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate your help today. See you later. Bye-bye.